friends, I am Pastor Robert Abner, and I serve Lutheran Church of the Cross in Muncie, Indiana, and Grace Village, the Lutheran Episcopal Presbyterian Campus Ministry at Ball State University. Good to be with you again as we go through some of our weekly devotional material, and you know, we we talk about the saints occasionally, we talk about the church calendar, we talk about uh, you name it, anything that comes to mind, and occasionally I get a write-in question. I've actually got a few queued up, but they take a little time for me to do a little homework to talk about them. And uh, this one has been queued up for just a little while. Uh, a member of the church had shared this uh, photo on my Facebook page and said, you know, this would be a good thing to talk about uh, because it's something people think about quite a bit. And so it's, it's, it's a big rabbit hole, right? So without doing that, uh, I just kind of wanted to shoot from the hip on this because it would become a very long video, and I'll, I'll talk about that here in just a second. But the topic at hand, um, those of you know, things that get shared a lot are known as memes, right? And different things can be memes, but typically they're just a picture with some text over them. They're either related to each other or not, or even true or not. Um, but the meme that... Uh, that was shared on my page. It was, it was kind of snarky, kind of antagonistic towards Christianity. And it said, Christians always say it's God's will when something happens. So why pray to him? Are you asking him to change his all-knowing mind? Ah, such a simple cursory understanding of the faith and most attacks against the dark. Um, so yeah, there are lots of rabbit holes, uh, as I said before, and I can spend a lot of time opening lots of different avenues and really bore you to death with the video, more than usual, uh, and a lot of proof texting will come in. Proof texting is when we say, when you lift just one thing from scripture to say, aha, that proves my point, rather than looking at scripture as a whole. So again, as I said, shooting from the hip to answer this question, that way it doesn't go too far. But if there is a part you want me to elaborate on, by all means, shoot me a message. Say, could you elaborate on this a little more? And I would gladly, gladly do so. So two things we have to think about when we look at this question. Again, the question is, Christians always say it's God's will when something happens. So why pray to him? Are you asking him to change his all-knowing mind? Uh, two things come in. We have to talk about God's will, and we have to talk about prayer. And the intersection of those two is going to be widely different based on what you believe about each thing, what you believe about God's will and what you believe about prayer and how they come together. And so uh, I'm going to tell you what I believe about them uh, with some supplemental uh, conversation around that. But that's where we begin this conversation. So the old term of God's will, okay? Uh, what does it mean? It's often overused and often misunderstood. God's will is for the reconciliation and restoration of the world through Jesus Christ. So anything that's working towards reconciliation and restoration and grace and justice and mercy and peace is God's will. That is God's will for the world, okay? Okay. Uh, we may say that daily in a little prayer called the Lord's Prayer that I hope you recite daily. I try to. Uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the conversation because that's prayer territory. Right now, we're just talking about God's will. Uh, so God's will is those things that are working to complete God's overarching plan for the world. There's the other term, God's plan, right? That's a subcategory under God's will. God's plan, capital P, is for Again, the reconciliation and restoration of the entire world through Jesus Christ. That is God's plan that God will complete in God's own time. God's plan is not you getting a flat tire on the way to work. That was not part of God's plan. So there's God's plan with a capital P. We always try to say God's plan with a lowercase p. And do some of the things that happen in our life come together to work towards God's plan with a capital P? Yes. But does that mean that God is micromanaging our lives because he has a unique, delicate little plan for each of us? No, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more too. God's plan is not cancer, tragedy, calamities in our lives. So God's plan is reconciliation, restoration. God's plan is not, or God's will, 
God's will is reconciliation, restoration. God's will is not cancer, tragedy, calamity. Some of you are already ready to argue with me about that, and that's fine, right? Because we create uh, safety nets in our head to say that X calamity or Z death occurred because it was part of God's plan, and I have created a coping mechanism around that to help me deal with that. And that's fine. Like, please don't let me try to dissuade you from your healthy coping mechanisms if that has become one of them. That's fine. God's peace be with you. However, I don't find that very comforting, and some, many, quite a few others don't either, to say, oh, well, my loved one died because it was part of God's plan. You can make that argument, again, if that makes you feel better, cling to that. Cling to that and the cross. But it doesn't work for me. And it doesn't mean that either view isn't entirely scriptural. So, guess what? Take your pick, right? Um, but what I will say about calamity and, and tragedy and the losses in our life is that though they are not God's will or caused by God as part of the choose-your-own-adventure of your life, uh, I will say that I do believe that God can use what happens after those calamities for achieving God's will, for the way that you change your life, or the way that you put things in a different perspective, or the way that it uh, causes you to do new things in life. I believe God can use the aftermath for God's will. Uh, you who know me know that I will rarely ever quote Rick Warren, but Rick Warren, after the suicide of his son, said something along the lines of, God never wastes a tragedy. And I thought that was a good line. Look at me, agreeing with Rick Warren. I thought that was a good line because Rick Warren was not saying that God caused his son to commit suicide, but that God was going to work through what came after that to strengthen, sustain, and, and lift up everybody uh, through that time of struggle. So kudos to Rick Warren for that public witness. Um, God's will does not mean that we are puppets on a string, back to that God's plan sort of thing, right? Because we have free will. So we cannot be puppets on a string with free will, right? So with free will, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are trying to bend our will to fit God's will, right? So we are not asking for our will to be done. We are asking for God's will to be done. Back to that Lord's Prayer, which we'll get to here in just a second. So, okay, I think we've journeyed through God's will enough to start talking about prayer. So, Back to that, the original quote, Christians always say it's God's will when something happens. Well, no, not all Christians. Uh, some do, and that's fine if they like to feel that way. But by and large, no, we don't say it's God's will whenever every single little thing happens. So let's talk about prayer and where that's going to intersect with God's will. Why do we pray? Why do we pray? Have you ever asked yourself that? Uh, I've wondered from time to time. Sure. I mean, come on. It's part of my part of my job description uh, to ponder these things. Um, and you have lots of different answers of why we pray, right? And that's ultimately why we always go back to the Lord's Prayer, because it says everything we need to say, but it also teaches us how to pray if we're not going to say the Lord's Prayer. But ultimately, my belief about prayer, again, scripturally, we can find... Contrary evidence to everything, right? That's the whole proof texting game. My belief about prayer is that we are asking God to bend us towards God's will. We are praying that God will help us to get on board with what God is doing in the world. And that we are not, in fact, trying to get God to change God's mind. Got into a big argument about that. I was talking about this with uh, one of my dear friends who was a, a Pentecostal pastor. He's no longer a Pentecostal pastor, um, and not because of this argument. But he, he took great offense when I said that we are not trying to change God's mind. He said, that's exactly what we are trying to do. We are absolutely trying to change God's mind. We are absolutely trying to get God to change these situations in our lives. And... That took us down some dark places to talk about dark places in our lives. And, and he had shared that his, his father-in-law had gotten cancer. And um, 
his father-in-law was a faithful servant of God, missionary overseas, had just done God's work in so many ways, and, and multitudes of people were praying for him, and he was not delivered from that cancer, and they just couldn't understand why. And so, well, that comes down, and I know this is going to be personal for lots of us, because we've all dealt with tragedy in different ways, but was it God's plan for him to get cancer, or was it just the, the side effects of living in a fallen world? Right, And so I choose to believe that we live in a fallen world where natural things are going to happen, like disasters and health concerns. And, and that's not thrilling to God about what happens to us. God, God is trying to use us for good, but sometimes the natural world gets in the way of that. And so those are tough conversations, and maybe we'll do bigger videos about that. So um, now, there are instances in Scripture where people have argued with God to change God's mind. And he did. But those were patriarchs in the, in back, in the, you know, back at the beginning of the Bible. You've got, you know, God wants to wipe out the Israelites because they're whining and being a pain in the butt during their exodus. And Moses says, now, God, let's step back here a little bit. And God does. And then you've got... Uh, uh, Abraham, who, you know, God is ready to wipe out Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham says, what if I could find a hundred righteous people? Will you not wipe out Sodom and Gomorrah? And God says, okay, if you can find a hundred righteous people, I won't, I won't destroy the cities. And then he says, what if I, what if it's just 50? And God's like, okay, 50. What if it's 10? Okay. And it, it whittles it down to like one. And he's like, fine. If you can find one righteous person in Sodom and Gomorrah, I won't wipe out the whole place. So, there's some counter arguments for you. I don't think they're going to get you very far. So when we pray, we pray for God to strengthen us, prepare us, guide us, reveal things to us, inform us. We pray that God just prepares us for the ways in which we serve him and for the ways in which we encounter the world. So we're praying for God's will not our own. We don't pray to hit the lottery. We don't pray to, to get a fancy new car um, unless it's all to be done to God's glory. And Lord knows when we win the lottery, many of us would not use it to God's glory. Am I right? So we pray for God to strengthen, prepare, guide, reveal, inform. Those were just some of the terms that came to mind pretty quickly. So, for example, if there were a health concern in our life, and this is the difference between praying for what we want versus praying for God's will. So, if there was a health concern in our life, we pray to be cured of this ailment, and then all of a sudden we are not cured of this ailment. And people explain that away in very toxic ways. They say, well, maybe you didn't have enough faith. Or maybe you didn't have enough people praying for you. Maybe you are not in the favor of the Lord. And this is absolute crap. Pardon my language if that offends you. But that's not true. It's just not scriptural. It's not there. It's not, it is not the way of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so a lot of people have been hurt by that line of thinking. But instead, when we pray... We pray for God to prepare us for whatever comes and to work through our heart and our mind to be ready to accept and face what comes before us and be able to use whatever we are faced with to be a witness to God, to continue to try to do God's will. So there is just some of my thoughts on the intersection of God's will and prayer and what we think about each of those. But I invite you again to consider the Lord's Prayer. The disciples, I've done a video on the Lord's Prayer before. Go look at that if you want a longer form discussion. But the disciples ask Jesus, they say, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, whether that's nourishment, shelter, food, bread from God in the form of, of God's grace. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Teach us 
to please forgive us and help us to forgive others. All of this in line with God's will, not our will. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Do not lead us down a path that will cause us to be tempted to go against your will. Do you see the trend here? Right? So, God's will, prayer, difficult things to navigate through. I get that. I get that. And, and I'm sure maybe you have questions about this, and that's fine. I would love, I welcome your questions. Um, and maybe some of this comes as a shock to some of you, and I hope that's not entirely the case. But we ask God's will to be done on earth as in heaven, not for our will to be done. And we pray that God will help us to bend our will to God's will. And that God will strengthen and sustain us and prepare us for anything that comes along our way. We pray to God not to change God, but to change us and to change our hearts to hearts of forgiveness, mercy, and peace. So, it's a good question. It was a lot to cover, and I hope I did okay in the short amount of time that I tried to do it. So, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you until we gather again. In Jesus' name, amen.